Murder is the four year long awaited sequel to the 2019 Netflix film Murder Mystery. Once again, Murder Mystery 2 is currently available on Netflix. Once again, it's about the Spitzes, Nick, played by Adam Sandler, and his wife, Audrey, played by Jennifer Aniston. This time around, they're struggling as private detectors in their own company, and they get invited to India for the wedding of the Maharaja, played by Adil Akhtar, who returns after playing the character in the last murder mystery film. He's getting married to his uh, fiance Claudette, played by Melanie Laurent, but the Maharaja is taken at this wedding, and they're going through multiple suspects, including Claudette, also the Countess, played by Jody Turner-Smith, the Colonel, back from the last film, John Connie, and Syra, played by Kahu Verma. Also joining them, rivaling their private detective work, is another detective, the person who's the, who the Spitzes look up to as a detective, is Miller, played by Mark Strong. The film is an hour and 29 minutes long and is PG-13. Welcome back to a brand new movie review here on Max Talk Movies. We're talking Murder Mystery 2. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, ring the bell. I do other movie reviews, TV show reviews, movie rankings, and a box office breakdown show weekly. So please subscribe, ring the bell if you're new to the channel. Comment down below. First of all, have you seen the first Murder Mystery? If you have, did you like it, not like it? If you've seen this movie, have did you like the first one or the second one more? Do you want to see more Murder Mystery franchise films in this, uh, in this for Netflix? Uh, or if you do not like it. Also, if you have not seen this film, tell me, are you waiting to watch both at the same time or you just don't really care about these Adam Sandler movies anymore? Uh, and also please like the video guys, thumbs up button really helps the algorithm out so more people can check out our video. So I did see the first murder mystery back all the way in 2019. Um, and I felt like it was an okay kind of whatever movie, not bad, but not good either. I think I gave it a 2.5 out of five at the time. And again, it's a very forgettable movie where I completely forgot the entire plot of the movie. And I'll tell you what, this uh, this Netflix uh, movie, Murder Mystery 2, definitely assumes that a lot of people have not watched the first film because the first two minutes of this movie is literally a recap of the entire last film. So I think even if you haven't seen the first film, um, they do give you a bit of a recap uh, of what happens in the first movie. Uh, but again, wasn't too excited for it, but... It's only an hour and a half. Just had time to kill last night. I wanted to check out the film after seeing the first one. Let's get my positives, the negatives, and my score. Um, I do think easily the best part of the movie by a lot is just the charming and chemistry of our lead performances of Sandler and Aniston. Um, Sandler is a person who, again, I really enjoy in a lot of movies. Um, it's just so confusing these days, the projects, because he has really had just a re renaissance of a year uh, when it when Uncut Gems came out, uh, hearing some Oscar buzz, and then he kind of went down the rabbit hole of doing those, uh, more of those Netflix movies with, with following that with Hubie Halloween, and then he came right back the following year with uh, last year with Hustle, which is one of my one of my favorite Netflix films of the year last year. Got him a SAG Award nomination, and now he's back to doing basically a vacation movie with his friends again. Um, it's a bit confusing because he really is a great actor when he puts himself in the right project. Uh, but this is definitely, obviously, if, you, if you've if you seen vacation-type movies with Adam Sandler where they go to a extravagant location with his friends, uh, this is a very similar type of movie to those movies. But again, him and Aniston, they've been a couple in a lot of movies before, and they continue to have great chemistry on and off the screen. And Sandler is easily the best part of the movie. He's the funniest aspect of the movie. I think his jokes were kind of the only jokes that landed to me um, in the movie. Um, also, I'm just a huge fan of Mark Strong, and I'm really just, I don't understand why he isn't getting more work um, in Hollywood at the moment, um, but he's another guy who I just want to see more in movies, and he's such an, one of the most underrated actors working today. I love Mark Strong. Um, it was great to see him in the movie as well. John Connie was always uh, very good, as always, as the Colonel. Uh, this movie also comes from director Jeremy Gerlich. Um, who did not direct the first film. Um, his other films that he directed uh, film-wise was just The Wedding Ringer, which is a film, I think, one of my, I think the most underrated for me, Kevin Hart movie. It's a really sweet little uh, movie uh, that came out a couple years ago. That's the only movie. Um, but he's also produced tons of other things um, as well as being a co-producer on The Breakup, which is possibly how Jennifer Aniston did that connection happened and it still does come from writer james vanderbilt 
um, who also wrote the film, wrote the first film, but also wrote the story for Scream 6, Scream 5, um, Independence Day Resurgence, Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2, um, Zodiac, The Losers. This is all the credits that this act, this writer has done. Um, but for me, the movie just, again, we'll get into the negatives in just a second. The whole cast is a lot of fun. And you can also tell that the actors are having a lot of fun. If you don't feel like yourself are having fun, maybe at least the actors are having fun. That definitely comes across the screen. And for me, it's just kind of a whatever movie. It's not something that I'm going to remember again. Um, it's not totally awful as I'm going to get into with some of the, a lot of the negatives with this movie. But I do have a fun enough time with some of the action set pieces that are in this movie. Uh, but let's get into my negatives. Overall, again, uh, this is just not a good movie. Uh, I think this is actually slightly worse than the original film. There aren't as many entertaining side characters as Luke Evans brought to the table. All of the other side characters revolving around Sandler and Anderson are just not interesting, especially Jodie Turner-Smith's character. Um, just really all the main kind of people in question are not that interesting whatsoever. So if they're not interesting and they're supposed to be the main people who could be the killer, or the, not the killer, the person who kidnapped the Maharaja, then the movie isn't that interesting. And the movie isn't that interesting because you don't care about the circumstance that we're in. The Maharaja is easily the most annoying character I've seen in the comedy um, in both the first one and in this one. Now, thankfully, because he gets captured in this one, um, he is not in the movie that much, which is a huge home run. It's no offense to Adil Akhtar, but it's a outrageously annoying character that all of the comedy for that character just falls completely flat. And because you don't like that character, you don't care about the mystery of trying to find his kidnapper. Um, a lot of the comedy revolving around Jodie Turner-Smith, again, another really good actor. Shock, she was in this movie. Again, she kind of has a really awful character and all of the jokes revolving on her and her sidekick also really don't work. And Mark Strong's, again, I like to see him in the movie, but he's just kind of there. He's not in the movie that much. And again, there's just not a lot of good motives for a lot of people. It was also good to see Melanie Laurent, who I really liked in the first Now You See Me movie, just really haven't seen her in a lot of things since then. Um, but she was also very solid. But overall, again, the story isn't that interesting. At times you can tell the movie is shot on location, but there's other times where there's a big blow up scene or they're in the Eiffel Tower and it looks like they're they're just in a complete green screen. There's a scene where Adam Sandler is trying to run away from fire and it looks absolutely awful. And as I said, the majority of the comedy in this movie just does not work. I, last, I chuckled maybe two, three times in this movie, um, but it's not as funny or as entertaining as the movie wants it to be be uh but again this is there's not so much to say about this movie um it's a pretty forgettable it's gonna be one of the most forgettable movies i've seen all year i kind of put this in the same category for me as shotgun wedding which i which i, I reviewed already on this channel which came out earlier this year on amazon prime with jennifer lopez and josh jamel it's kind of like the same movie um two again charming lead actors who clearly are having fun there's some fun to be had but the overall story is not very good. The comedy also isn't there. So it feels like I just watched the same movie just a couple months ago. So I'm going to give Murder Mystery a two out of five stars. I'm going to go 40% for Murder Mystery. It's not awful, but it's also just, I'm sorry, I'll go 38% for Murder Mystery. Just not a fun time uh, watching on Netflix. But again, it's a pretty forgettable movie. So it's not an awful movie, but certainly not good either. So that's my review of Murder Mystery 2 on Netflix. Have you seen it? Have you not seen it? Let me know in the comment section. Like the video. More reviews are coming soon, guys. So stay tuned. I'll see you guys soon.